Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin and we're back with the chip computer because today we're going to look at it in its pocket chip configuration. This is a, a handheld enclosure that they designed for the chip computers from the same people that make that $9 device. And if you haven't watched my original chip review, uh, definitely watch that one before you watch this one because we cover uh, what the uh, guts of this device is all about in that video. So basically this is a $9 computer right here. Uh, this actually comes out of this enclosure so you can pop it out, uh, use it as like a little desktop computer Computer and then uh, reflash it and stick it back into its enclosure and get the handheld version of it once again. But I covered this in a lot of detail, so you definitely want to check out that video. It is a working $9 computer. It just doesn't work all that well at the moment. It's very slow. It doesn't do a lot, uh, but it's a rather interesting implementation of it that they've put into this enclosure uh, that we'll be spending some time with in this video. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that I purchased this with my own funds from the chip Kickstarter. I put money in about a year and a half ago or so, maybe a year and a few months and it finally came in about two weeks ago and I've been playing with it uh, ever since. So all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and nobody is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a look here and see exactly how this thing is configured. So you've got a, a keyboard here. This is kind of like a membrane keyboard, but it feels like a raw keyboard to me. It's almost like you're pushing, as you are, uh, pushing down on the sensors themselves. So when you uh, hit the key here, it's a little bit hard to type on. It's not very fast. So this is not quite like a BlackBerry keyboard or something like that. You really have to give the keys a good push. On mine, the enter key here is not uh, always reading my enter pushes, so I have to really push down hard to get that uh, enter key to work. But it is functional as a keyboard. You do have to do a lot of function keys to get at some of the special uh, things on the keyboards. You have to hold down function and then push another key. So you're not going to type all that fast on here. It has a touchscreen display. This is a 480 by 272 display. It's got a virtual mouse function to it also and actually works pretty nicely as a touch display. So that was a nice uh, add-on that they had here. Uh, you can get out of different apps by holding down control and going to Q and that will uh, bring you back to their launcher here. This launcher is in its default configuration. I did see some stuff on their website today where uh, people are modifying this launcher and adding Doom and some other games to it. So there are things that you can do to uh, modify this uh, launcher and the choice of applications that are on there, but it's not easy to do. Uh, so there's like a 12 or 10 step process to getting uh, applications loaded onto it. It's really not uh, quite there yet. But I think if you're really interested in learning how uh, Linux-based devices work, this might be a really fun way to do it because you really, if you really want to customize it, you have to kind of dig into uh, Linux command line prompts a little bit to get there. So that might be worth uh, looking at. Uh, the chip itself is on the back. We reviewed this prior, as I mentioned, so it can come out. It's just uh, basically resting in on the two uh, sets of pins on both sides of the, of the device here. What's nice about the enclosure, though, is that you can get access to the GPIO pins. So if you are working on a project, you can uh, get solder things onto these little uh, pins here, and it will connect up with the GPIO pins on the chip computer itself. There's also a battery on the bottom here, and this is good for about three or four hours or so of light usage with it. It charges just by plugging into uh, the micro USB connector on the chip. So if you have this uh, disconnected, uh, you can just uh, plug that uh, micro USB in and power the computer. But when it's hooked up to here, it will also charge the device or the battery uh, while it's plugged into the enclosure here. So it's got a multi-purpose function there. The USB port is accessible. You can plug in a keyboard and mouse to it if you wish. And you can also use the uh, video output on the back here to get composite video out and essentially mirror what is on the screen. Now the pocket chip configuration costs about $49 at the moment. I believe their price is going up to $69 at some point in the future. Uh, it includes the chip computer itself. So it does come with the chip computer for that price. You don't need to buy another chip. I was surprised when mine came in that I had two chips now, uh, one over there, one plugged into the enclosure here. But uh, you have to flash the operating system specifically for the use case. So if you are using it in the enclosure, there's a separate version of that Debian operating system for this case. And then when you take it out and try to plug it into a keyboard and mouse, you'll need to flash it again for more of a desktop kind of use. So you do need to uh, flash the device depending on how you're going to use it. They do have a very easy to use uh, flashing mechanism built into their website. So this is uh, what you get here. Just a couple of applications. There's a uh, file manager here that you can poke around with. A little hard to get at some of these menus. So you'll probably want to use their keyboard shortcuts. So for example, if I want to hit uh, the file menu, I can hit Alt F and that will pull up the file menu here and I can navigate uh, with the arrow keys down. I can use the touch screen also. It's just a little bit hard to sometimes get 
uh, at the thing you're trying to type on or, or tap on while you're using it there. Uh, control Q will get you back out to your main menu most of the time, so you're able to escape pretty quickly and get uh, back to where you are. Uh, there is a terminal here, so you can go in and bang out some uh, Linux commands if you wish to install things manually to it. It is possible to adjust this uh, home screen here and make it customized to whatever applications you've installed on it. There are some instructions on their website uh, for doing that. Uh, just today, somebody posted up something about how somebody got Doom running on this device, the old game Doom, uh, and they've worked out a way to get that icon accessible on the menu here. It does take a lot of steps, so it's not as easy as just going out to the app store and downloading the app. You have to really work to get uh, the stuff you want working on here, but it is possible. Uh, one of the neat things that they included on here, which I think is uh, really kind of cool for kids that want to get into game programming, is something called Pico 8. And this is a uh, what they call a fantasy game console, and it's uh, been around for the PC for a little bit, and it now works on this device, which actually is a very good match, I think, because uh, this is really a very low-powered computer, and these games are uh, specifically designed to be low-powered themselves. They have very uh, strict limitations on what the games can do inside of this fantasy console, and as a result, the games are really simple to uh, put together, very simple to play here. We'll just start up this one called Celeste, which is a favorite of the, uh, the chip computer team here. And as you can see, you just uh, move around with your little character here and uh, jump around this, this scene, and you can uh, see how it all works here. Now, what's cool, though, is that if you hit the escape key uh, and go over to um, edit this cart, you can actually edit the code and the sprites and everything else of the game. Now, it's a little hard to work on this tiny little screen, so you might want to get the PC version and uh, dig, dig around at the code, but you can basically change the game on the fly just by accessing the code of the game. Uh, so again, if you are a kid or know a kid or you are a kid yourself or a kid at heart uh, and you want to learn how to make games, this might be a really fun way to do it because you've got uh, the entire code for the game running uh, right here accessible to you. This is in the Lua programming language. And then if you hit function and arrow key, you can work on all the different sprites. Again, I think you definitely want to plug in an external mouse or something to work with this because it's really hard to uh, poke around at the screen here. But you get everything from the music and the sound effects of the game to all the individual sprites, uh, even the maps of the levels are here too, and you can uh, add some different features to it if you want and have those reintegrated into the game. So really fun, uh, project-based kind of thing uh, that's really well suited for this device. So I thought that was neat. Uh, one other thing of note, there is a uh, music application, like a little music synthesizer thing here. So I'll go ahead and maybe plug in uh, my, my cable here. We'll hear what it sounds like. Nothing too crazy, but it is a nice little fun thing to play around with that they've included on here. But it still feels very bare bones to me. So we'll just go out of here. I'll turn the volume up on our uh, on our switch, our audio mixer over here, and we'll hit the play button, and you can hear what this sounds like. So um, that's kind of what it is. Again, kind of a chip tune kind of thing, and you can go in and uh, program your own uh, musical creations on this little device. So that's the kind of stuff that they include on this. Um, let me just turn the volume back down here again. So that is the audio application. Nothing crazy, some chip y kind of stuff, and you get the uh, Pico 8 Fantasy Game Console and a pretty cool case around it also. I'm still kind of on the fence on this whole chip thing. I think they've uh, put together something interesting. The problem is it's not all that optimized on the software side, so it runs slower than I think it should. A lot of other folks who've written in from my original review also agree that it seems like there's some drivers that haven't yet been optimized for the hardware, so I think performance on these things is going to improve over time. Uh, I do think this is a really cool case. Um, but when you look at what it might potentially cost in the very near future, $69, uh, you could get a cheap generic Android uh, tablet from China for around the same price and get better performance and a much larger community around uh, developing software for it. So this is one of those things where, uh, you know, the community is really going to make or break this product. If they can't build the community around this, then uh, it may not be all that successful. But where I think this might be of interest, and I come back to the makers who are watching, uh, is the fact that you do get a pretty functional device here, a keyboard that you can access, a touch screen that uh, has at least a decent resolution, enough for what you might use it in this uh, instance for, and the built-in battery, uh, along with the computer itself that's running a full Debian operating system and all the little pins that you can access uh, your sensors to and all the other stuff that you might do uh, in a project environment. Uh, this might be pretty useful for those folks because you do get an all-inclusive package here. You can plug in an additional battery to keep everything working longer uh, and have the ability to uh, get at your computer while you're out in the field without having another computer with you. That might be uh, very valuable for some folks. So that is uh, probably where I would recommend uh, looking at this device at the moment. Probably not a general consumer device. We'll keep an eye on this thing because I think there's potential with this, uh, especially if they're able to make the optimizations to make the chip computer itself run better. I'm really eager to see what uh, comes out of these folks over the next couple of months. So stay tuned. We'll probably be coming back to this in the near future. This is Lon Seibman. Thanks for watching. 
This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.